So I want to show you a triad pair exercise. And this is something that not only helps to develop your, your map, your fingerboard map, but is also applicable um, over dominant chords uh, to, create, to create interesting substitutions. So you're kind of practicing multiple things at once when you do this. So really important, I think, to practice and get under your fingers. Um, so the three triad pairs that I do, again, if you have never heard of this word triad pairs, you're literally just taking two different triads, two tonal centers, just the one, three, five, and we're pairing them. In other words, we're going to go back and forth between those two triads, and we're going to create interesting, uh, interesting sounds um, and to uh, drill those arpeggios up and down with different inversions, which inversions is something I really uh, think is so important to not just always play on the root. So the first one we're going to do of the three is going to be whole step down. So let's look at G, and then a whole step down from that would be an F note, right? So we'll do a G triad and F triad. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up one, down the other. So what I would say for to really for getting that on your fingers and really getting on your fingers, is come up with a couple different patterns. For example, you might do up and down, which we just did, or you might do up up, or maybe you could do something that kind of starts in the middle of the triad. Yeah, it's very satisfying to practice. These triads are, are very satisfying, and it's a good left hand exercise. It's a good bowing exercise because of the string crossing. It kind of covers all the bases. And then mentally, if we're focusing in on those arpeggio shapes, in other words, I'm thinking about G, and then I'm thinking about F, and I'm really visualizing it, um, it's super important for developing that map. So it's something that helps across the board. So that's G and F. The next triad pair I would recommend is a whole step up. So that's going to be G and an A triad. Again, you could do different patterns with that as well. Always thinking about the tonalities in your brain as you do it. So the third triad pair to get under your fingers is uh, the tritone. And so we mentioned how mentioned that before that I use this tritone sub, in other words, a G to D flat triad, and that's something I would use. Um, but that's so that's going to be our G to D flat. So why do these? Well, there's multiple layers. It's a good exercise for the left hand, the right hand. It's good for mapping out your fingerboard. You're drilling every inversion of those arpeggios. And there's something about not just practicing one arpeggio, about going between the two that I think triggers our brain to think a little bit harder. And so that's going to be for the mapping out. But then for the context, how would I would use these? Well, I mentioned that that tritone sub I'd use over dominant chord. But each of these... Each of these triad pairs, and the reason I mentioned these three particular ones are because these are ones that I use over dominant chords, and particularly dominant chords that last long. So there's a big difference between a dominant chord that maybe, say, has you know four measures and then resolves versus one that's just quickly resolving, right? We can't approach them the same way. One is moving quickly to the next chord, one stays there, so it's a little more static. So these kind of triad pairs are great for that kind of chord. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mess around with the G and F, and the G and A, and then the G and D flat over a backing track so you can hear what it sounds like and what imposing these triads actually does. A one, two, three, four. <laughs> That's the G and the 
F. Now I'll do G and A. Kind of gets this brighter sound. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, now the G and D flat, that tritone sub. So this is going to be a little more outside the box, but it creates an interesting sound. One, two, three, four. So it's all good to just take one chord and improvise over it, but I'm going to give you some context. So. The, like I mentioned, places where the dominant chord lasts a long time. So if you see a G7 or an E7 or any of those dominant chords where it, you have not you have multiple measures and you want to come up with interesting phrases, this is a place where the triad pairs will work. So a classic song would be Sweet Georgia Brown because it has those dominant chords that last a little bit of time. So let's try uh, to explore each of those three triad pairs over a song like Sweet Georgia Brown. All right, Sweet Georgia Brown in F starting on D7. A one, two, three, four. <laughs> experimenting with different different triads and remember one thing that I'm doing is I'm not just going up and down I'm trying to create phrases so little motifs that uh, give it a little more concrete and a little more so solid uh, you know a little more solid melody melodic purpose a one two three four <laughs> 